to Melangra la Amagala Mago Daily Teta on SABC One. Nakalibito kina Nicolette waga mashile wana wakwa bush pa krish ma pula ning yenar twarling lona limela matzawa ki sisi fortune waga matlala. Now we know we are amidst the coronavirus outbreak, but as we say in South Africans, stay hygienic and don't panic and do what you need to do. These are just the measures that need to be do, to be done: washing your hands, hand sanitizing, and all the things that you need to do. Social distancing. But we are missed another crisis in South Africa. 2.3 million houses. That is the shortage that we currently have in South Africa. Now that number is rising and growing every single year by 178,000 houses. And the people that are mostly affected, and young professionals who really are just trying to zama zama bo pilo mo South Africa, but very clear about sin adin to. So so robots and so on kono kuko rena. Where do you know why na? Ure make vianga taba yo ya housing shortage. How do we fix the situation? Because not being able to pay rent or take a land to ya we ni being na can cost you education number one. It can cost you a job and can land you in debt. Joba sa ibegi lega usi singe ka mo mele tuaga. I'm going to tell you about the story of 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 the Housing and the cost of rent in South Africa, but the kulu guys who pay good amount student affect the gila kulu when it comes to they pay three thousand five hundred for rent, got to three thousand one hundred who go to salary na malini and maybe should we adjust umte to lend the lubego ngako kona who go to see the guti low monto umfundi or tapu monto kalu sebenza agu azu guti a rent enda weni a clean enda u eni mpilo pindi guti enda u is safe. So on this on today's topic is funu guti weni jobu tele kai guti was nigi tu bugu tu pa uli tapu tele and you have been affected. You are paying a lot of money for rent, but you don't see the value. Maybe the government should step in. Utilize your social media. Hashtag Daily Teta. Go Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Go to Best Natanda. Go to On 011 339 Let's ask our studio audience how they feel about regulating this rent. So, let's see what I'm going to see the global corner. I'm going to put on me. Take it, boys. Do you know how much? A student pays for rent like South Africa. Yeah, uh, I think they, they pay plus minus three point five. Okay. Yeah. And bookaba uh, anga can be for the three point five. I think three point five it covers uh, maybe a bed. Okay. And then a, a, a privacy where mm. they where they can study in peace and on a quiet uh, place. Mm. And then maybe f uh, running water. Mm. And then yeah, I think that that's what 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 the three point five can cover. Something was. Do you think it's fairly priced? Uh, it's fair, it's not fair. Okay. So something is a good one, huh? Yeah, but I'm going to talk on behalf of I'm a I'm going to talk on behalf of I'm a student. So, I'm going to talk on behalf of I'm a student. I'm going to talk on behalf of I'm a student. I'm going I'm a student at least. A better and less price. I'm not saying that I'm going to talk on behalf of I'm a student. Maybe it rent ya bo even less. Mm. Banga patari high because abana income. Mm. Some of our our, our families like imzans. Mm. Abanta bani abana bazali. Mm. Eh, and gune average abanta banga sebenz. Mm. Of which is bafundi lene. And they couldn't put back kube and abani ama pupo abazang bakone no guti bawa fez. Okay, last question. Uguti to. If when you could put a price, how much should an average student be paying for accommodation in South Africa? Leo, it depends on the rent of So, it depends on the rent of the rent. I don't know the number, just a rough number. It should be less than 3.5, as you said. Okay. Oh yes, okay. We talk about your backroom and about food. Go talk now about seven zero. Who just started? Seven zero kala. We start with internship. Three point five. Nicolette. Is it enough? I'm confused, in Melody. As somebody who also owns property, you put some money together and talk about seven hundred thousand. When you go pay the rent, three point five. Bang. Hey. Let's ask my sister Mata. Mata, I'm put some money now. When I can afford, who should be putting price on rent? More when I do long one. Who is not the government? The government must stand. Kemastand. Eh, 
dumelang ke maputswa bolelang ke nna tshwentse ke be price ya ya rent cost of ke nna master so u sheba u sheba gore na se se mata o gola bokae before o be a price a ya ke lebelo o gola bokae ke no be a price ya room ya ka ka room ke ya ka ke check price ya o ena o gola bokae e u tla reng ge government ya tla go go wena ya re because wena wa rentisa u tshwantse o be a price ena le ena le ena a wa nga sutlo ka government ka re plek ke ya ke na landlord ke ha ka ka mo ke nna tshwantse ke be a price a e government e e abutwaka quick one what would you choose would you rather live far o patele rent e chipile o patele a more petrol a transport cost or no transport cost but a more expensive rent e dumelang wa buang ke neo from hamaskral e na nka kheta ya ho kire ya ho na how feel to where i work with no transport cost with no transport cost but a higher rent yeah it's better you don't mind paying a higher rent cos ka transport o tsa a long distance to get what you going yeah have it za o ka ho na le le risk mo teng o ka tshwariwa po ho o ka ira lang do tse buy mo e na and then una le ge mo dulang teng una le a lease contract Yes, it is. Unali list contract. Kete ba maputi wana au na list? Ake na list. Ake signi mutu le mu. Ake signi mu contract le mu. Mara malawa mo South Africa oru twenty overly ona so. Na kete bi. Ake 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 kete bi malawa. Ake kete bi mutu. That's why na kete bi malawa. Yeah. Na kete bi aso malawa. Okay. It's very interesting because this is the conversation we're having. Lo kono mwa daily sister because twenty rutu tisa na kere. Yeah. Rutu tisa na esba tu. If malawa ute ngwa kor oru twenty overly a list contract between landlord and tenant, then we must make sure it's there. But at the same time, also looking at the price, because my Melody, for me, the biggest thing is that it starts to hinder mm. with pro progress of mm. young professionals, young students, because yep. they don't have accommodation. And according to the constitution, housing is a basic right. Put my court to in order to speak to the big things. How do they calculate the mm. rent for it? But mm. all of that, this boy. If you are just joining us right now, we know that housing is a basic right in South Africa, according to our constitution, but we've got 2.3 million shortage yet in South Africa. So, we have to say that you are now. Should government step in and regulate the pricing of rental, whether it is for students or young professionals who are really just trying to start their lives and be able to progress in this economy that's already at its its hinges. Mm. Now we want to focus a little bit on how rental prices are determined yep. and who actually influences that increase. We're joined by two spectacular ladies. We've got Vui Swamotekwane, who's the CEO of South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners. And then we also have Kululi Webengu, who's an attorney at the Social Economic Right Institute of South Africa. Mm. Welcome to Daily Tetabo Mama. Hello. Thanks. Nice to you. Yeah. So before we get into your conversation, social media read from Facebook, it affected me big time. I was staying at an off-camp residence, but due to a house breaking, I moved to a university residence. That's when my problem started. I ended up owing more than 15,000 rand, and that hit me hard. Even today, I am still paying back the money, and this happened four years ago. We are born again now. We are not just being affected, not just for the dream for school. But mm -hmm. let's quickly go and check out an SAPC insert that was recorded talking about the shortages of housing in Johannesburg. Hijacked buildings and slumlords are synonymous with Josie. The Johannesburg CBD's limited housing is under severe pressure. Every month, as many as 3,000 people arrive in Africa's second largest city, hoping for a better life. The city is trying to clean up and make more housing available. It includes an ambitious project to convert derelict buildings into low-cost housing. But the envisaged public-private partnership has come under fire from some quarters. Johannesburg, fast-paced, pulsating, with opportunity. A magnet for migrant workers seeking greener pastures, but lurking beneath the scenic skyline, a city in ruin, battling to cope with the influx. Scores of dilapidated, hijacked buildings. Then in court in Hillbro, home to thousands. The conditions deplorable, posing health hazards. The water here is not clean. 
who drink water from fire extinguishers. Even this electricity we have is illegal. This resident has stayed here for 20 years, witnessing the gradual decay and slumlords' reign of terror. The problem is hijackers. They come and force us to pay rent. After three months, they give us a run for it. And then another group will come and force us to pay them again. But there's a glimmer of hope. This is one of the so-called bad buildings earmarked for development. It's owned by the city, but under the control of slumlords, the building is in a bad state of neglect and lack basic services. But residents here say they have no alternative. Kwa kutu nguguzo loku kubona uguta abandu ba pila kanjani South Africa. Skati nsa manjila asisi kwa nasesu pila in a different time. Segu ngono kwa banyi kusafana. Let me first go to my ladies and just mbuzo uguti. Kati kati in terms of your institutions, organizations, what role do you play? So saz uguti besi kulma na nsi kulma ngani kati kati. Okay. Perhaps I'll start. Uh, so, as you had said, my name is Vuiswa Muchekwane. Mm. I head up the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners. Yeah. Our organization is a 24-year-old advocacy organization, lobby group, that is championing for transformation in the okay. property sector. And we look at transformation in a number of different ways. Mm. We, one, we represent our members who are property developers, um, contractors and professionals, the mm. people that actually build these properties, mm. the landlords, and many of the people that are part of the property sector. Sure. Um, on the other side of that, we also represent, we also look at issues of transformation from mm. a spatial transformation mm. perspective. And it's mm. the questions that we are asking today. I think the gentleman spoke about wanting housing that's close to work yeah. or close to economic opportunities. Yeah. And that's mm. an, a big part of what, of what we look at also and we do research on as an organization. You okay. know, even if you look at the township and the kind of development that's happening Ekasi, yeah. in our own townships, where you've got outside developers, often mm. even big white owned development companies mm. that are coming to develop even in our own townships yeah. and putting out a lot of our own um, developers in those areas. Mm. So those are some of the issues that we challenge and we tackle and we work with the various arms of government to champion transformation and to uh, implement certain initiatives okay. uh, across the board, national and local government. Mm. And, and do you find that in just, just sticking with you, do you find that your office is currently, do you feel that they're doing justice to the system that exists at the moment? Look, I think that the problem is enormous. What you've said about the housing backlog, 2.2 million housing backlog, yeah. it is not a small problem, yeah. you know, and we've got enshrined in our constitution the right to decent housing, but mm -hmm. we also have enshrined in our constitution the right to private property ownership. Mm. Well, Mustang can set whatever rent, uh, they, want. rent mm. they want, and mm. it's okay. their right to do that. Mm. But it's also the role and responsibility of government to use whatever resources available to them mm. to mm. make sure that they are providing that decent housing. Mm. So, you know, there's a number of policies and pieces yeah. of legislation, and even uh, programs that have been rolled out by the Department of Human Settlements, for mm. example. And I'm using an example, there's, there's the SHRA, the Social Housing Regulatory Authority. Yeah. Mm. There's the FLISP program, which yeah. enables um, property ownership yeah. for people mm. who are earning between 3,500 and 22,000. Yeah. Um, there is GPF, the Housing mm. Partnership yeah. Fund, which funds you know, property development in that area. But still, we find ourselves in this situation. And okay. we need to start challenging and asking the question of how do we how do we also pressure government? Because mm. government also owns a lot of land and but they have a lot of property available to them that they need to be using and availing to people. And as you say, setting limits on the pricing of those properties yeah. and making them available to people. And perhaps maybe now, if, and you said, you know, th there's a right to private ownership of yeah. property and creating a business within that space, right? Mm. And listening to somebody like Mapu, how do we then stop these big corporations from coming into the country and, and creating the housing that we've got, so solving a socioeconomic yeah. issue, yeah. but at the same time monopolizing that space? Okay, um, before I address your question, yeah. um, I think I'll address this question about where I'm from. Yes. Mm. So Social Economic Rights Institute, it's a, it's a law clinic. Um, we deal predominantly with housing matters. Mm, yeah. um, we ensure that we, we stop unlawful evictions yeah. and evictions that would lead into homelessness. Yeah. And going back into your issue, 
I think the answer is very simple. Um, the, the Department of Human Settlement needs to have policy mm. um, to regulate the issue of rental mm. because they don't have enough means to provide accommodation. When you say they, they need to put in a policy, a yeah. regulator, a, a, a accommodation, the rental market, yeah. how? I, I just want a practical example because, I, and, and perhaps maybe the example that I had used earlier on, yeah. a person like Maputi, or a extender, can shelter ya high, can eat one budgeting ya and then government ito kena im moto horna a charge of guy. Is that the policy we're looking for? Look, I think, and, and this is exactly what I was saying, yeah. is that when it comes to uh, property developments or or, or, or or actual buildings or properties that are owned by government yes. or that are mm. funded with by government, government money, money. Mm. Yes. absolutely then they need to enforce and yes. regulate those types of things. Okay. However, the reality is that you can't. Even if someone came to you as a property owner and said, "Back room, how wherever you live, there must be." You, you can't. You can't mm. regulate that level of private property. Yes. But there needs to be enough stock that's being made available through the government vehicles to make sure that the problem is being solved. And I, I, I don't think it's it's an impossible it's an impossible problem. But, through, then, but it's been but impossible for so long. Sorry, Melody. Mm. But my, my thing is, if, if you just look at Johannesburg CBD yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the VETS issue, and the UJ issue, mm. which means that this university on its own as an institution is failing yes. to cater enough be, uh, uh, accommodation for mm. its students, yes. right? Now, then they said, let's change CBD into student accommodation. But mm. those buildings are being owned. And government intervention has not worked. Yes. Mm. So, so, so what are we saying? You know, what I think is important in this discussion, as you said earlier on in the show, that yeah. everyone has a right in terms of Section 26 to yes. adequate mm. housing. housing yes. I mean, like she also says, every, um, the property owners have their rights in terms of Section 25. Mm. But it's been said multiple times by the Constitution that those rights can be infringed for a moment to make sure that people, are, their rights to adequate housing is not um, infringed. They're not ending up in the streets, which is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a new breed of evictees being mm. um, created. In the video that you played, um, the, the normal evictees that we know are those people who live in dilapidated buildings, Spaces, mm. but yes. not, not so much anymore. You mm. have young professional students being, being rendered homeless because of an eviction. Mm. And I, I think it's important to include in this discussion the history of um, how we got here. Of how we got yes, here. Yes, you know, seriously. prior to 1999, when we had the, re the Rental Housing Act, um, sorry, the Housing Act, yeah. we, we had the Rent Control Act. And in as much as that act had flaws in many ways, mm. but it regulated the imbalance of power between tenant and, and landlord, landlord. Mm. and such regulated the rent. Mm. And because of that, you weren't seeing a landlord coming tomorrow and increasing your rent by 200%, mm. which is something we've seen in actual cases 100%. that have gone to court. Mm. So um, I, I think it's, it's not just a, a, a thing of saying government should control how property owners use their land. It's, it's legislated. Mm. The act that we have mm. of 1999, Section 2 says, the government needs to create policy on regulating such issues. So, so okay. I think, Ms. Boy, I'd really love to touch on the point is where do we draw the line between expansion and exploitation mm. when it comes to creating mm. these systems? Mm. Go on, Ms. Boy, after that break. So, I'm going back to Daily Tetra Lago SAPC 1. Should P rent be regulated by government in South Africa. We must follow our tight ends. I go to Zalimala from students to learn about the local sevens. My brother, Mr. Lubuza, as a property owner, as someone who's a landlord, do you believe that you have a formula to stop yourself from exploiting your the people that rent in your property? Yes, I strongly believe in that. Good day. Um, my name is Dominic Lau yeah. from Westbury. I strongly believe in that. That's where the contract comes in between mm -hmm. the tender and the um, the mm. owner of the house, the property mm. owner. So if you don't apply to the contract that state in your contract, because in your contract there's terms and conditions yeah. you need to apply with. Yeah. Nana, if you don't apply to that and you run away mm. with my rent money mm. that I've been asking you, mm. 
I kid you can't run away with everything once. Mm. So you as an individual so run away. So you take your part and then come so to the come school. Here. So me, I, I have to be supervised. I need to look at what's happening at my property. So if you run away and then you leave the room, uh, you still have the key, you lock. So my, my, my move on is then to open that room yeah. and to see all the things that's in there to pay for my rent. I strictly The question is, it. is that by law or by because when... Uh, no, no, it's not by law. Very, it's a very law, but at the end of the day, the kids must eat. The children must eat. I need my money. Okay, so we as good abanye babona ganja as as people who are landlords. But Nicolette, maybe later we'll understand the Are people following the rules? Yeah, I think it's also important for us to remember that the views that I expressed on the show are not necessarily the views of Daily Teta or the SABC One, right? But I think, Melody, I would like us to go and see mm. an insert that was also done by the SABC where you actually see the cries of landlords and the situations that both landlord and tenant are having to deal with. Let's go and see that. A landlord's text requesting Bazaar students to vacate their rooms after media recess. We were kicked out by the landlords because they didn't receive their payments. 22-year-old mechanical engineering student Siabong Kanzaniswi, just among dozens, affected. We are sharing a shark, four of us. We are sharing a shark. We can't start. There's too much noise, so we can't able to start. We can't able to cope in this situation. The lack of allowance money, another problem. It's already end of the year, so this is the problem. We don't even have food to eat. Over a kilometer away from Alex campus, their former residents. Here, more frustration among landlords. I'm owed for more than 200 students, so which is a million plus. I think it's one and a half million that I'm owed. They only paid me for 23 students, talking from May, since from May last year. Lamini is faced with a bill totaling over 100,000 rand for water only. It has been very tough, very tough, and the municipality has been, uh, up, uh, has been coming to me, switching off other services. Then I had to go and back, get money from the uh, loan, money from the bank, and then uh, and pay the municipality. But you are not because of rendering service. And the man is shiva mo. But now since you are bull, you are bad. But you are not But you are not I don't know what to do. A different story in other accommodations, but they live in fear, as they could be evicted at any time. Some of us are from far away, all the way from Limpopo. If I get kicked out, I'm probably going to be under Mandela Bridge or somewhere, I don't know. I can everything more. I'm electric, So, I never saw Patella. I can see more than two or three Patella or an actual rich for me. The student, they have uh, 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 qualifying for, for the bazaar and they signed for SOP for 43,000. But the issue we're questioning ourselves why the school is not paying. The college says students' performance could have affected allowances. Then they'll say, but I got the money. Yes, you got the money. But you lost the money when you failed. If a landlord says, I've signed an agreement, I would like to see that agreement. Because as a principal of Central University College, I did not sign. It's a, it's a give and take, you know, from both the landlord yeah. and the tenant. At the end of the day, it's going to to a point where there isn't a double jeopardy, not only mm. for Yene as a tenant who's paying yeah. black tax, and then still have to come and struggle with paying rent. Hey. But at the same time, for the landlord, finding themselves in a situation where a bill, Yamei, bill electricity, is mm. ranking up, and at the end of the day, Chanzo Patele parking bond. The bank are in your chiba or your tenant didn't pay. Municipality and your chiba or your tenant has run away. You know, so those are the things that I think I'd like us to speak about. And you spoke about the rise in 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 evictions. Yeah. And you didn't and you said it's not just evictions now in the in the very slums. It's now evictions even in 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 your noble suburban areas. Are those caused by high rent or are they caused by what you spoke about this increase or sudden increase of 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 rent? I think um, in the cases that um, I've been exposed to, they're caused by both. Mm. Um, the pattern that you're seeing, especially in the inner city, 
is that people are buying new properties and then renovating them, yeah. making them smaller. Mm -hmm. So you, and then when they list out the properties, they're making people pay two times the rent of the previous yeah. property for half the space that yeah. the, the property was. But is it then not because mm. uh, the, the bank is also asking me for two times, <laughs> if I'm given an interest rate of 13% on mm. a house, mm. that I can only get rent, yeah, yeah 4.5. Mm. I, I need to make that space work so that I can pay my bond. But the problem is we, we can't act as if we, we, we are blind. Like, I'll, I'll tell you property, this yeah. is what happens. Yes. In the inner city, even in the townships, because there's a lot of properties and things, so I, people, because they want to rent, mm. we're taking property, you know, but you're like, okay, I'm going to buy this house and I'm going to revamp mm. it. It's going to mm. be 10 rooms. It's going to make me 20,000. Mm. Mm. You forget about the people who mm. live there, about their affo affordability, mm. about their rights. Because mm. I think it's important to always bear in mind when we discuss these issues, Uguti, at the very bottom are people who, uh, the working class, yeah. um, whose rights often get infringed because we yeah. think, no, it's my property, I bought it, I'm paying it bond 10,000. But it doesn't mean, Guti, because you want to protect your rights, you should infringe the rights so of So should I be making a loss then? Because I think that, yeah. that, that's, I think, and that's why I was talking about the give yeah. and take, yeah. you know, uh, uh, because in, if, if, if there's a lease in place, the lease kind of, mm. and I, I think that's what uh, the gentleman that spoke just now was talking about. If Khunali a lease in place, mm. there's only so much escalation that you can do. But if you start to see, and, and, and I, I, you've got uh, properties, right? If you can start to see, Khuri, municipality is raising rates mm -hmm. and taxes. Mm -hmm. You are not breaking even. Mm. Should you then make a loss at the cost of mm. trying to be, you know, taking care of people. But since before I'm going to lap, my, my, and I'm going against Nicolette's yes. point of question, of because <laughs> it, it makes me question at what point do we address the exploitation? Because yes. I can hear what you must stand But does that directly mean what But now you exploit our government, no municipality. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good question. And yeah. I think we, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but okay. I'm going to say it in a different way. Yeah. yeah. The weakest link here is government. Okay. If we are honest with ourselves. Yes. Okay. Because Uma standing with her two rooms is not going to solve our 2.2 million housing crisis. Sure. Indeed. Okay. Yes. That solution needs to come from big box developments and they need to happen quickly. Yeah. So who's driving big box developments? Well, one, it's government through mm. body mega housing projects mm. and whatever, yes. whatever. And also through policy instruments. Mm. Two years ago, a policy called the inclusionary housing policy yes. was implemented yeah. in the city of Joburg. Yes. Yeah. That policy, the way it was structured, it basically said, all developers, yeah. when they develop, they need to, 20% of the number of units mm. needs to be set aside for inclusionary housing. Yes. Tina yes. saw, new, you know, up young professionals, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Mm. The problem with that piece of legislation is it didn't set a rental cap. Mm. It just hit 20%. It just said, so if you've got over, if you've got 100 units, yeah. Uh, 20 of them should be mm. inclusionary, right? Yeah. Now, that's fine, but inclusionary in Santon can be 8,000 Rand yes. a month, yes. you know? Yes. And so, again, government fails at actually getting to the heart of the problem and mm. solving it. That mm. was a very powerful piece of legislation that had sure. the potential to really reverse our apartheid spatial planning yes. and all of these issues that we're now dealing with right now. But mm. again, weakest link. And then if you look at the, the programs that are being driven through human settlements, yeah. Human settlements is driving, pumping billions into housing. Why are we not feeling those billions? So, yeah, guy, yeah, well, but to come to come with it before we get us to swamp, we are about to go for an ad break because I'm full of good food. I'm missing your miso food. But if you can in a line, can you pinpoint where the guy? I can't in a line. So, like you were saying, we we're going back to special planning yeah. because CBD becomes too expensive for me. Oh, yeah. Then Even I have to go to it. Yeah, to mm. eh, but if the prices of CBD are increasing, it means we would have a stand about good bedroom by so to now, but they're following that trend. Mm -hmm. So yes. a bedroom is becoming more expensive. Where do I end up? I end up in an informal settlement mm. on a land that is dramatic, and the municipality now has to pump money to make sure Uguti, I've got. All the right that that be the I want to know where the billions are. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. Best move, yeah. <laughs> so, Kuma also about should the government really impose this cap on rent? Yeah. Or the Best boy.
Welcome back to Daily Tech. I said, I'm looking to was a little to Stanley Night. It's time to connect with you. I'm going to cut a go to your Facebook and we go to our Facebook live and it was to a young kid. Just call me alternatively. It was a little fag in a pair go YouTube. But come on, just call me in the Bishi side. Good thing and better. Should the government regulate a rent? Lavender by Coca. Should they put a cap? But before that, I'm going to welcome our two guests on the two gentlemen. So I'm going to go to Daily Tech. I'm going to King Spear, who's the president of Ilungelule to Human Rights Foundation. As I'm going to put in, of course, he is the Inner City Federation Secretary. City. I'm all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm a 28-year-old, a middle-class worker. I earned less than 10,000 rent, and I've been, I've been applying for a home loan for years now. Okay. And when I go to the bank, they, I, they say I only qualify for, I only qualify for 300,000 rent mm. loan. Mm. And the houses are, are rated for 450,000 rent. Yeah. And the lady was helping me with it. She said she will help me qualify for a house uh, government subsidy. Mm. But she got back to me and said, you know what, you do not qualify. You need to get someone to pay your pay and then you can qualify for a bond. I am not willing to pick a name, a partnership with someone for 20 years yeah. so that I can qualify for a home. Mm. And at the moment, my rent is 2,000 rent. I can call it, I can calculate that 2,000 rent a month in 20 yeah. years is going to be more than 480,000 rent. 100%. I want to know if, is there anything that the government can do to mm. help people like me? I'm not asking them to give me hand out. Yeah. I am willing to put myself out there. I want to work for it, but yeah. is there anything that, that can help me with? Like, I think that I am too poor mm. to get a bond. Yet too rich to get an RVP house. Well, I've got a question. Numbers are just simple. Um, at this point, do you believe that you've tried all the, the possible routes to what you told me does exist? So, yeah, you get that? I'm saying, do you, do you believe that you tried everything that you can to find all the information you need to get someone to assist you? Or did you just try one door and you felt discouraged? Like, I've knocked in many doors. Okay. I have knocked in many doors. And I even went on Twitter. I, I DM the Department of Health, like Housing. I mm. DM the political parties. Nothing mm. really helped. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mpole. So I think what we'll do is we'll ask Mrs. Buiseka there to try and, and, and see how we can mitigate into that conversation. Um, so we're going to go to her across the room. Yep. Sis Vuiseka, I think what Mpo is trying to say is that she's in the forgotten middle. Mm. So she cannot afford the home loan that she's looking for. It almost comes back to Tabaya ownership. Yeah. How do we encourage young black professionals to own property when one, they actually cannot afford to get a loan. The banks are saying they can't get the loan they're looking for. But at the same time, the rent is too high. Yeah. It makes no sense for her to be renting. What government interventions are mm. available? So I didn't hear the details of yeah. how much she's actually yes, earning. Yes, yes, so yes. without the actual... I think she said 10,000 rand. 10,000 rand. Yes. So my understanding, mm. again, as I mentioned earlier, there are programs like the FLISP program yes. that are available to people within that earning bracket. Mm. I am not saying that the... the, the I, I can't comment on the approval yes, procedures or anything, yes, yes. but I'm saying that you know a program like that was designed specifically for that so-called missing middle. Mm. But with that said... I do note that governments, a lot of the programs that are channeled towards such people are mm. very much rental focused. Yes. So whether you look at the affordable housing programs, they are targeting people who want to rent between four and a half thousand, five and a half thousand. Mm. And certainly there are not enough mechanisms to, to promote black ownership. Mm. I have also started seeing many of the banks now who are starting to actually open their doors mm. towards um, um, young professionals yeah. and and. Uh, earners in that scale and mm. they're looking at things a little bit differently so I want to encourage her she mustn't lose hope mm. um, I, I 
we certainly as an organization believe that property ownership is where it all starts. You mm. know, we can't just be renting mm. eternally. Four, yeah. Four and a half thousand rand a month that you're spending on rent, you could actually be paying a bond on a 350,000 rand mm. or 400,000 mm. rand house, yeah. you know? Yeah. And mm. while it may not be next door to your office, but it's an investment and it's something that will help you to build a financial future. So we must start somewhere. Let me sure. actually read you that social media that's coming in there. I'm a, I'm a student at Central University of Technology, Bloemfontein campus, who lives off campus and my accommodation cost me 3,600 and I only received 3,100 for accommodation. So I have to go deep into my pocket. Mm. It's hard for us students. That's why we end up sharing a small room, C3, so that we can share the rent. Hey, I want to leave it long because, hey, not just we are corner. You know, when you sit and you look at it, it's a band just to get a degree, but then it's a squat. You know, I feel like room are in the and it makes you think as a mundo moshu guti. Come back to the Ukfara when about kings be a guti. Is this not a violation of human rights when we talk about Uguti now? Uno muntu over evicted lata la corner or sebenzai as a new person or a student. Does that not touch on my human right? Yeah, well, well firstly, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Mm. Uh, I've been an activist from 1985 yeah. until up to now, dealing specifically on issues that related. But before I do that, I just want to indicate uh, that Uguti. Uh, Tina Sartes the apartheid. I mm. want to speak Zulu because yeah, you know, mm. you know, when I get married, uh, when I, I, I never choose my wife, the state uh, mm. uh, in this way. Uh, I was an elder Kohai uh, mm. with segregation laws. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't own the property of Snam so okay, now at 15 Market Street, so nice about nice. So Ushuti and was good in ten years. If I'm not a I don't know. I won't go as at all. Mm. So okay, now, firstly, before and Ukumbu, I won't mama be even a savings, but we don't the seven. So this was during those during tough times during as South Africa. Tough times mm. as a South Africa. Mm. Yeah. So okay, now okay, that's where it started. Mm. Now. Yeah, now okay, that's how I was involved in 85 in yeah. yeah. movement. You know, around the issue of logos. Mm. So, okay, therefore, man, shut up, I was told like 15 Market Street. Mm. 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 So yeah. that's why we have areas like so it is for Nabo Piri and Maturu Mini. It's for those widows. Mm. Because in sure. our culture, they if motion a lindo, the Fenego Tatunyaga, Uzili. Uzili. Yeah, yeah, but the system by then was not allow you to do that. Mm. So, so mm. Papa 2020, what is the difference for property ownership, especially Batuabanzo? You see, Kibatla Statamo, mm. my actual job, my core function. There are three things. Mm. One, the transformation of judicial. Yeah. Okay. Because little has been done in terms of transformation of mm. judicial. Yes. Because all these things, the eviction, mm. system yaro na judicial, is bad in that. Yeah. Mm. Very bad. So okay, that's why we opt. Being on a level, this kind of apartheid in terms of regulation, it, do you feel that? Yeah, no, I'm going to lay up, very forceful. You know, okay. this one, lay manje. You see, good night to his name. It's his undermining the law. So, Papa, I, I just want everybody more understand the Uri right now. It's 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 it, it, it has not transformed. What, what what is it right now? How mm. does it work? This eviction okay. process. Mm. Now, yeah. okay. before that, but the first thing that I must indicate, um, say that I come to consumer education. Hey, a good constitution. but but we don't have it. Have it. You know, I always say, uh, but what's the Bible from Genesis to the last verse? Yeah, but about uh, even. The, the human rights are born. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see, now, when we have been evicted, God is not there. Yeah. I'm not saying Mudimu Hayo, mm. but I'm saying God is not there. When we've been then, evicted. When we've been evicted. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe let's bring Sia Bonga in here. How <laughs> is that? Hey, Bonga, hey. The ev eviction. Talk us through eviction. Yeah. Please. Uh, 
at whatever corner you are bringing it from. We want, we want to understand, and I think I want to join it back to Kuli Lewis' mm. concern about even the evictions are no longer just happening mm. in the slums. They're happening the everywhere, you mm. know. And, and, and it's becoming expensive to live in a, a, a suburban area that these desirable areas, even now, it's becoming expensive to live there. So when one is being evicted, what is the process that's happening? Uh, my name is Siabonga Masango yes, from Inner City Federation. Yes. Uh, we are working through the eviction and access to basic services. Yes. Uh, the process of eviction is too long. But the, the landowners or the property owners, they will bypass that one through uh, Section 5 of the Pi Act. Mm. Uh, what does Section 5 of the Pi Act say? It, it's where they don't consider whether that eviction is going to lead to homelessness or not. Okay. Mm. While Section 4, it says that people, they should not be uh, evicted while they are not go they've got nowhere else to go. Mm. So when you're evicting someone, you're supposed to create a, a secondary home yes. or an alternative? Yes, but that role has to be played by our government. Okay. It's a constitutional obligation mm. okay. that comes uh, from Section 26. Eh. It's clear. Yeah. That's why whenever they bring the application a court, Benza show that the government is a respondent. He must act proactive. But, because I want to learn a bit more also yeah. about Amarit Ends, which is yeah. yeah. okay. especially okay. in the city. Mm. But go on, look after the break, when we come back. Welcome back to the biggest youth show in South Africa, Gionage E Daily Tetago SAPC One. Sit is Kulma about the possible cap or should government cap the policy when it comes to thinking of rent. Yes, no, Assad is Safunda, but we understand that because before we went to that break, U King Spear had said something very important with Abandu Abaiwazi, I'm a human rights swap. But um Tinkal Buza when I man, do you know your human rights when it comes to Indabas or Klare Engine and and living? Yeah, I know my human rights, but uh, for rent, I'm not choice because of bar hotel la mo renti o wan. Bo must end bar hotel too much because mo kidula na kitsa ni enan kinal three years ki rent. Yeah. Ne ko ha ne ken na mo eight room ki le wan. Ne ki try to na ki wan so no ki na mo tembisa ki renti ile Heke renti ile o skantsi ya o ka re am so stranda ta ke na next wa wa but 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 that's the that's the thing we're addressing uguti some people are stranded abanya bantu ba hlupekile and that's why they're being abused and i want to ask you quickly siswam before ngwa zwi singi bisa ngi kolet do you believe uguti wena as abo mustand the abusing abantu in south africa some some of them they do abuse us because our colleagues would say, "But I couldn't manage." I communication are you? Are you at least if we can have communication? You know, at least they get a lot of yes. Our colleagues would say, "Understand, okay, good, okay, we must stand up for our local, 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 local." Our phone is in that. Okay. Yes, I'm but I think that it comes back, and, and speaking to the room, it comes back to what we're discussing, more coaching, even just the eviction process. But mm. Yeah. And if I would say the eviction process, if somebody then evicts you with just today and says tomorrow you must move out, you move out because away it's AB. So right. can you uh, please go back to that conversation and talking about what can I evict as a mustandi as a landlord? Can I evict someone without a court order? No, 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 no. no. You can't. You can't. So Tonton should be caught odd. Yes. Oh, right. the, the, the thing is like this. We have to do this application and we have to do this. Yes. We have to do this. Yes. And we have to do this. Yeah. Then, we have to respond. If I'm able to, if I don't, I will go for legal assistance. Yeah. Until we hear the case is here, we Until the case is here, we in front of the judge. Yeah. Yes. Then the judge will say, okay, the city should intervene as yes. the respondent. Yes. Then the city will do an occupant audit to see whether I do qualify to be assisted by the city or not. Yeah. Okay. Then the city will deal with that report. They will take it back to the judge and say, 
this particular person needs to be assisted by but, us. But, but yeah. I mean, it goes back to the questioning you began on Nanuguti. Amarit ends, at what point are they enforced? Because in a best one of Pella in cities, Seba Fever Chrome over the Rular Radi, Seba Kipa Bantu, and Inob Song Leonto, and Tinabanya's understanding, Gunung Kulis. I just want to add on mm. that. Mm. You have a problem in Kulu. Okulme is very good about section four, subsection two, yeah. in terms of act number 19 of 1998. Yeah. He indicated about a section four, mm. yeah, or, uh, 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 section four, subsection four. Yeah. Mm. But the on that, we have section 4, subsection 4, we have section 4, subsection 6, yeah. we have section 4, subsection 7. Okay, subsection 7 is critical. Yeah. Okay. Because in the court, you'll find the lawyer that represent us. Yeah. For instance, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a landlord, I have a heavy lawyers. Yes. I'm a lawyers. Lower, lowers. Yeah. Uh, lower. I'm a student. <laughs> we understand yeah. now that yeah. thing. And then you know, yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Mm. I get a lot of that is kill poor mentally. Yeah. You, you, you get, mm. I want to represent her. Mm. Sometimes in court, I stood up mm. and say, with due respect, my lord, Ella, uh, it's justice mm. has not been served. Yeah. Because I got all a critical. Mm. It's section four, subsection seven. It's critical we do in a section for subsection seven. Mm. It's because it could be a government obligation. Mm. Okay. You see? Yeah. Government obligation. No eviction must be done without an alternative accommodation. From Full government. Stop. From the Not government. from the landlord. Not no, from no, the no. government. Okay. You see, let me tell you, in addition to that, mm. we've got two critical laws in this country. Mm. One, it there's an act that called Housing Act, yes. yeah. Act 107 of 1997. Yeah. Yes. If the preamble of that act, it says good housing is a supreme law in mm. the Republic of South Africa. Mm. You, you understand? Yeah. But further than that, it's not my judgment. That but, was supposed, SYB is a more groundbreaking judgment. But, that was supposed to be followed. Mm. Are not been followed. I'm going to pause on this because I'm going to go to the house and 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 I'm going to go to yeah. The, 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 the student and the young professional who are finding themselves mm. being evicted because they can't afford rent. But at the same time, also protecting the landlord because yeah. if, the, if the state fails to, give, to, to, to stop that homelessness, yeah. the landlord suffers also because now I've got someone who's not paying rent. Yes, but the, 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 under the case law, the Constitutional Court put it clear that the landlord's right can be suspended. Mm. Yes, can but who must suspended. pay the bond? Mm. <laughs> then we, 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 on that stage, we should sit down and see what we can do to mm. help each other. Because you can't say, I must pay while I don't have got anything. Mm. So, so what you're saying is the, the, the state fails at its job yeah. to create that alternative accommodation. The landlord then suffers. Yeah. The landlord should and say... The, uh, and the tenant suffers. Yes, but the landlord Maria Court, final to no, I'm here to compel the city yeah. yes. to pay me. I will provide that alternative, but they should pay rent to me. But okay. Tigo was a CCP first. Before we close the show quickly, I would just want to ask you one more question, Siswami, before Sam. Simple one. If there is no regulation of Iran in South Africa, what could what happen? happen? Mm -hmm. So what AMA tenants have as an option is to use the unfair regulation mm -hmm. um, as Landela E-Housing Act. Mm -hmm. And what those allow them to do is to refer the matter to the rental housing tribunal to say we must end up with 200 percent that yeah. is unfair yeah. people have done it in a case that has gone to all the way to the constitutional court and the constitutional court has come back and said no that is is not a e fair practice yeah. go back to a rental housing tribunal the problem that we have a good e rental housing tribunal mm -hmm. They don't understand this whole thing. Mm. So it's left to people, Abbas, it's okay. No, in this case, yeah, no, we can agree. In this case, no. Truth as a not student, do you think I have the powers? Just like literally in 10 seconds, do I have the power of students voting by, by Luis? Yeah, you can go to the rental housing tribunal. Um, using the act to say, okay. no, this is unfair practices. Okay, all right. In Jalogay, I saw Jovasi Valagan Jalinda, but it's got that the conversation does not end here on Daily Tata Kubega with social media, Kuna Alinda. But what's in a bella? Should it do or should it not? Tomorrow we're back with Queen B, half past 10 to half past 11, only on SABC One. Bye-bye.